Hello. PostgreSQL is a relational database management system that was first spawned in 1986. It offers a very powerful, liberally licensed database service you can use for your applications, and it's more often known simply online as Postgres. Its homepage is at postgresql.org, and you can go there and learn more about it if you like. Now, if you've used MySQL, Oracle, or even SQL Lite, you'll be familiar with using a database and the uh, SQL database query language. And Postgres basically gives you more of the same, but with a slew of extra benefits. And I'm not going to dwell too much on them, as I'm not really going to try and sell you Postgres. This is more about installing it on OS X. Uh, but a few of the benefits, just to sort of, you know, have a little quick go over. Um, it's BSD... MIT kind of style licensed. It's not exactly one of those licenses, but very similar. Um, this means basically there's no need to share any improvements or changes you make to the to the Postgres. You can sell it. You can you know you just need to include the copyright notice. That's the main thing. There's no single company that controls Postgres, unlike. MySQL, for example, you know, where Oracle kind of, uh, you know, control that now and own uh, the company behind it. It's been around since 1986, so it's pretty mature by this point. And it's more compliant to the standards than, say, MySQL, so porting legacy code to it can be easier. And it supports things that you would expect from a, a full, full-on um, relational database system like views and stored procedures. There's some powerful full-text search stuff in there. There's also lots of modules, even including like a key value store called HStore. So that's kind of cool. So on to the installation. A guy I know called Will Jessup, I know him from IRC, he's a, a sysadmin at 37 Signals. He was writing a post about installing PostgreSQL for use by Ruby Rails developers on OS X. And I said I'd make a screencast that kind of roughly followed his article because I was just interested in doing a, an article about uh, Postgres anyway. And we kind of sort of, I guess, had the idea at the same time and batted it around a bit on IRC. So, you know, if you'd rather read about this than watch or listen to me, you can check out his blog at willj.net and you'll find the post on there. So first things first, I'm assuming you're on Mac OS X and that you have Homebrew installed. And if you don't, I have another video where I talk about installing that. Or you can Google Homebrew space OS space X and you'll find its homepage and then you can follow the instructions from there. And then once you've got Homebrew installed, basically the main part of the Postgres install is actually quite simple. From the command line, you basically just need to go brew install Postgres and press enter. It's Friday. It'll get on with downloading stuff, applying patches, compiling, and when you're finished, some stuff will come up on the screen which we'll see shortly. It's, Friday. it's worth noticing that I've cut out a lot of downloading time here. This takes quite a while uh, depending on your connection, so yeah, just uh, sit and uh, drink some coffee and let it roll. And now we're back at the prompt, it means the install is complete. You'll see it's actually put all this text here. This is extra information to help us with using Postgres from this point on. You can bring this up again, if you like, by typing brew info Postgres QL. So you don't have to worry about losing that, you can get back to it. So let's walk through the initialization process. We'll follow a simple uh, routine that basically mirrors exactly what they've put here in the list, which is initial, first we need to initialize the um, cluster of databases, and then we need to set up the stuff to actually run and stop Postgres, and then there are a few other things that we're going to do, like we're going to create a, a basic Rails app that leans on Postgres and just check that it works and stuff like that. So first, we're going to use this initdb command, which it lists here, and basically initdb creates what Postgres calls a database cluster and essentially that's just a group of databases that can be accessed from the same Postgres install, the same server, you know, at once. So it can be many databases but this is just initializing where those are going to be stored. So we run that. Now next we need to set up the file for the launch control in OS X that will allow us to start and stop Postgres server in a nice simple fashion. The standard way of doing it is you copy a plist file, uh, which is a property list file, into a certain place on the file system, and 
From there, you can then use the launch control system that's built into OS X to start and stop it. But that can be kind of hard to use. So actually, there's a guy called Mike Perham who's produced something called Lunchy, which is basically like a bit of sugar around that whole thing so that you don't have to do you know quite so much messing around at the end of the day. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sudo gem install Lunchy. Now, if you're using RVM, you might want to do gem install Lunchy, but on this, this is actually the clean, raw OS X Ruby, so I'm going to do it this way. And this should be a very quick install. There we go, we have Lunchy installed. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll back up because information about that file, the uh, launch agent file, the plist file that I was just talking about, is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy what it says about making my own local launch agents uh, directory in the library directory. Paste that in. Great. I'm then going to follow its uh, next line, which is copy the plist file into that launch agents directory. And now I'm not going to follow what the rest of those instructions said. I'm going to actually use the lunchy command lunchy start postgres and Postgres is now running. And if you want to stop that, just do exactly the same thing, but with stop. So it's very simple. I'm going to go back, start it again. Next, we're going to create a user that can access Postgres and to which we can assign databases. So to do that, we use the create user command. And I'm just going to use something really generic. So I'm going to use create user, user1. What an excellent name. I'm going to say no to being a super user. And then I'm going to say to creating databases, I'm going to say no to. And then create more roles, also no. So now I'm going to create some databases that I could use in a Rails application. So to do that, I'm going to use similar command, which is create db. And then what I can do is I can put in who the owner of that database is with uh, capital O. And then I'll say user1. I'm going to set the default character encoding for this database to UTF-8. And then I'm just going to put the name of whatever it's going to be. So I'm actually going to call my app empty app and uh, create a development database. And then I'm going to go back up, do this again, and create a test database. Now we've got that, we kind of want to access these databases and just see that they were created and get some kind of console going. Now if you've used my SQL you will know that you can just run that up and you get a console where you can run you know, SQL commands directly against the database you created. Well Postgres has something similar and it's called PSQL and I can launch it like so PSQL dash U put in the username put in the name of the database so empty app development let's say and it's begun without any errors. If you type help, very, very simple. Um, you can dig down deeper, the options are here. But I'm going to exit, I'm just going to press backsp uh, backslash Q, and now I'm back out. Now we need to install the gem that will allow us to you know, actually use Postgres from Ruby. Now if we go back up to the information here, they've actually put in something that will help us to do that. There's a line here. It sets the architecture flags to x86-64. This may be different on yours. Um, but it's just to guide the compiler into you know, which, which architecture is it going to compile it for. And then the gem install PG. PG is just the name of the gem that's uh, relevant here. So I'll just copy and paste that. And now we wait for that to install. And now it's installed. Now we're going to create a dead simple Rails free application that leans on the Postgres that we now have running. So I've got a code folder here and in here I'm going to then run Rails and I've got Rails free already installed if you haven't you're probably going to want that if you're not using it already. Basically I'm going to go Rails new empty app dash dash database equals Postgres QL and we're good to go. And now the app has been created. So let's head into the empty app directory and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a scaffold and I'm going to use a model of a post so as in like a blog. Add a few fields here and we're good to go. 
And because we specified PostgreSQL as the database to use when we created the app, it's going to do everything necessary at this point to kind of uh, adhere to that. And it's done like the database, uh, YML, YML file and all that kind of stuff. So one thing I need to do is I need to go into the database YML file to change the username that it's going to access the database through because it's not the same in our case as the name of the um, database itself. Um, so we need to get that changed. And because I'm really lame, I'm going to use Nano to do this. You would use your IDE, but on this uh, current build, I don't have one running on here. So what I'm going to do is go to Config, Database YML, and then in the Username sections, I'm just going to change that to the User1 that we were using when we set up the user for uh, PostgreSQL. And technically, I don't need to change these ones yet because we're not actually going to run this in production, but you get the idea. And then I can run the migrations. Now, we're going to start up our Rails server. So I'm going to run Rails server. And let's bring this up. Excellent. Go to the posts controller, create a new post. Just put in some very uh, rudimentary information here. Excellent information. As you can see, it works just much like it would for you know, SQL Lite or MySQL, anything like that. That's fine. We have the list of items here. I'm going to close down this Rails server. And then what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to quickly show you how we can use uh, PSQL to you know, have a, a bit of a dig around here. Here we go. It was PSQL dash capital U user one empty app underscore development. That's the name of the database, of course. We go in. It's a little bit different to MySQL, but basically we use backslash DT, and that will show us our tables, or relations as they're called here. And that shows us we have a migrations table and we have the post table itself. And then we can have a quick look at what the post table is all about. And this just shows us our columns, types, and anything like that that's set. And then, of course, we can actually run normal SQL here and do a select from posts, and we get the results like so. And that's pretty much it for now. I'm going to go backslash Q to get out of here. And that's the absolute basics, and we've kind of reached the end of uh, Will's tutorial here. You know, if you want to move on from this, just start playing, really. There's lots of stuff out there about, from this point, you know, how to use Postgres. Um, separately from Ruby, separately from Rails, um, but also, you know, with, with Ruby and Rails as well. And now that you've just covered the basics to get to this point, a lot of the stuff that you find should uh, apply. So, thank you for watching.